What a joy to be able to open this service this morning and welcome you. Uh, it's been such an awesome council. I've heard that said over and over again by many people, and I echo those words. It's a special joy for me to be able to open in prayer this morning for this ordination class, as well as a celebration of, of 50 years of ministry. What a joy, what a privilege to be able to do that. Yes, give the Lord a hand. Amen. So if you would, we want to start everything off. I'm going to keep mine one minute short. So Terry, that'll give you an extra minute to play with. So if everybody stand, we'll open this service in prayer and ask God's blessings upon us. Amen. Father God, we are so thankful to join together with our family. Our family of, of some actual families and some just friends, some brothers and sisters in the Lord. But what a fellowship. What a joy divine. So Father, as we enter into this service today, we pray that it would just be a very, very special service. For those that are being ordained and their families, we pray, Lord, that you would just bless it in a wonderful and mighty way. Those that uh, we will honor for 50 years of ordained ministry. What a joy and privilege to do that. So, Father, we just humbly ask you to pour out your anointing as you have this whole council to anoint the speakers, to anoint the worship, to let everything be done just the way that you want it to be done. And God will give you the praise, give you the honor, and give you the glory. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Greet those nearby and let's worship the Lord together today. Why don't you turn and welcome someone to this wonderful closing ordination service? You know, I have to admit, this whole council has seemed like it has been warmed, and I use that term affectionately warmed by the fellowship of the body of Christ. There's just been something about each other and the presence. And so you're acting as if you like to see each other, either that or you're just glad this is the last service and you get out of here. <laughs> just a joke, Superintendent. I will tell you, this is one of the highlights for us. When we get an opportunity to acknowledge, and you may be seated if you desire to do so, Thank you. We have several, not a huge number, but several that we want to honor for 50 years of ordained ministry. Seems like every year that Brother Rayburn and I get the opportunity to give this acknowledgement we, we need to reemphasize that there are always individuals who have been in ministry longer, but this is in recognition of what is significant to this service of ordained ministry, continuous ordained ministry. That's a milestone, and that's nothing to be taken for granted. And so in a lot of ways... It is to honor those that have gone before us and paved the way, give credit where credit is due and to celebrate them. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Each one of these have their own legacy. They each have their own story. 
They each have chapters in that story that can be endearing and long and even at times challenging. And there is no way that we can adequately in this service kind of go through the weeds of that, of that life's journey. But in some way, we hope that this acknowledgement brings meaning, substance, and appreciation from our district and the general council to the service of these that are being acknowledged in this district council. So to begin, our ordination class for 50 years of continued ministry, Reverend Richard H. Cunningham. Reverend Richard H. Cunningham. Obviously, some of the ordination dates are such, but Brother Cunningham pastored in Panama City, Eufaula, Alabama, Texas City, Texas, Orange Park, Florida. But the legacy and the history and the influence continues to live on. And so even though Brother Cunningham is not with us today, we celebrate Brother Cunningham in 50 years of ordained ministry. Marshall L. Dodd. Brother and Sister Dodd, come. What, a, what an incredible moment this is. Now, I've asked permission to do this. Most of you would have no idea, looking at this precious couple, that he has been in a multiple-year, at least two-year journey of battling leukemia. This is his first public appearance in two years. Two years. Two years. Now, Brother Dodd, I will tell you, being the people of faith we are, <laughs> we celebrate you just for enduring. We also want to acknowledge the fact that your ministry in Mississippi, South Carolina, New York, Ohio, I believe Iowa, New Jersey, a couple of places in New Jersey and Kissimmee, Florida, all of your ministry and everywhere in between has not been taken for granted. And we so appreciate you. We love you. We honor you for your 50 years of ordained ministry. David L. Cahosa. Brother Cahosa served in Missouri, U.S. Army chaplain from 1974 to 1993, was a lead pastor in Maryland, served in Korea, also a lead pastor in New York and California, and a chaplain in Wesley Chapel. In our district, Brother David Cahosa, we celebrate 50 years of ordained ministry.
legacy in Penn, Florida continues on in recognizing 50 years. David, I cannot believe, David Matheny, you are at 50 years of ordained ministry. Yeah, that's what I say too. But Brother David, if you and Sister Pat would come. I want you to know David doesn't let anything go by without a lot of words. If you've ever struck a conversation with him, he'll talk your leg, your leg off. He is his father's son. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. He coached me. He said, he texted me in anticipation of this. He says, now, he says, you are going to acknowledge Pat, right? And I says, yes. He says, I wouldn't be where I'm at without her. Well, he didn't say that, but I'm saying it. <laughs> so, Pat, this is your moment in the limelight because with this man, you don't get much of the limelight. <laughs> well, David, you have left a great legacy as well. You really have. And your lead pastor position in Bonita Springs and Gainesville. In fact, I understand that 50 years ago, you were ordained at First Assembly here in Gainesville. Is that correct? Okay, Jacksonville. Okay, my bad. I can always count on you, David, to correct me. In fact, I, I think it's the whisper of Gordon Matheny coming at, you know. But the bottom line is, is that he served as the decap in our district. He was involved at Central Bible College from 83 to 84. He was lead pastor in Washington. He was an administrator at Central Bible College from 88 through 99. Again, a, a lead pastor in Williston, Florida. And I will tell you, there is no way we can give the full background to this man. But we want you to know, David and Pat, please, Pat, don't feel left out. We want you to know we celebrate 50 years of ordained ministry. David, that is your original ordination certificate. <laughs> the parchment is faded. <laughs> David, there you have it. In the words of our treasurer, there you have it. <laughs> David, you can pay me later. I hopefully I pass the pass the test. He didn't seem very excited about that. Reverend David C. Zink. Served from 74 to 75 with Southeastern Bible College Extension in Jacksonville, professor with Trinity Bible Institute in North Dakota from 75 to 1989, was lead pastor in Jacksonville from 97 through 99. Brother Zink, we celebrate 50 years of ordained ministry in our fellowship. God bless you. Amen. We never know from one year to the next 
how many we will have in terms of that. We get our list from the general counsel. But nonetheless, we celebrate all of these that have gone before us. Would you stand and give all of our 50-year ordination candidates another expression of appreciation. God bless. Amen. I've been given the task to introduce our ordination class speaker. Uh, but I want to say what a council this has been at Greenhouse Church. Man, I have just sensed the Holy Spirit so greatly during this conference, and I'm so thankful. Uh, our speaker for the ordination class of the year 2022, of course, is our bishop, our superintendent, Terry Rayburn. And uh, I called the office. I wanted to... Uh, you know, I'm getting a little older, so I wanted to make sure I had my dates right. And I said, can you send me a bio? And they said, it's on the web page. And uh, so I went and looked at it, and uh, there's some great accomplishments in Brother Rayburn's life. And um, one of the first things that stares out there, and I, I've got to tell him if he ever sends out a resume, he's going to have to take one thing off of it, and it's glaring right there in front of you as soon as you see it that he went to the University of... <clears throat> hey, we don't say that here. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that here. But yes, he graduated from the University of Alabama. I told somebody a couple times, I don't think I've ever heard him say, Go Gators. <laughs> and the only time I'll say roll is if it's cinnamon roll. <laughs> Amen. But uh, he redeemed himself recently getting his doctorate from Southeastern University, the greatest university in Florida. Amen. I met Terry Rayburn. Uh, I had to go back and count it up, but it was about 44 years ago. And it was back at that time that I found out that he was a missionary in the Middle East, that he had written a book about some of his experience there under the guns in Beirut. I read that book. I was mesmerized by his experiences. I uh, found out it was also there that he got a background in communications and radio. You can read his bio. It's quite extensive. He represents the Peninsula of Florida District and the Assemblies of God, not only in the United States, but around the world. And, and that is something uh, to be said. Uh, he serves as the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Southeastern University. He's a member of the General Presbytery of the Assemblies of God. He's a board member of the American Bible Society for Life. He also sits on the board of directors for Church Extension Plan Group. In 1990, he became the national director of the Division of Church Ministries. In 1996, he became superintendent of Penn, Florida. And in all the years that I've known him, every time that I think of Brother Terry, I think of Sister Athena. I first met, like I said a while ago, Brother Terry uh, about 44 years ago. And I came from an independent, charismatic background. And uh, there was some brokenness in my life. I had nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. And I happened to drive up in the parking lot of Mount Zion one Wednesday night, and they were having a food fellowship. And he came out and greeted Paulette and I in the car. And I just said, hey, we'll come back Sunday. He tried to get us to stay, but we came back. And so we started attending the church where Brother Rayburn was pastoring. And one of the, it was a great church. Every Sunday I went in that church, that church was full. It was packed. You had to, you, you didn't always get a regular seat. You had to find a seat. After we attended church there for a couple months, we were driving home one Sunday after church. And my wife said to me, have you ever noticed that he cannot preach without crying he cries every time he preaches and uh, 
you know, the thing that really just drew me there was what I was looking for God provided in this pastor. He had fire. He preached with fire in his belly. I guess you would call it conviction. And then the crying, just compassion. He had compassion for people, and I really sensed the anointing of God on his life. And God used this man in my life, in my wife's life, and I think it's a miracle that I'm even in the ministry today. Um, but he did something. He invited Paulette and I to come and have dinner with him and Athena in their home. It was in the parsonage. And the parsonage was on church property right beside uh, the church. And uh, so Paulette and I, instead of driving around the block to the parsonage, we drove behind the church and came and parked right there. We were a few minutes early and said, well, let's just wait in the car for a few moments. You know, we don't want to be early or anything. Can I tell this story? Okay, I will not tell that story. <laughs> but I want to tell you, God gave me a friend in Brother Rayburn. God gave me a word when he was past when he was pastoring and preaching, and God said, I'll restore the years that the canker worm hath destroyed in my life. And uh, I used to hear preachers say, I'm third and fourth generation Assembly of God preacher. And I said, God, I'm third and fourth generation heathen. I'm at a disadvantage. But God gave me an advantage of having a friend like Terry Rayburn. Will you help me welcome our bishop, our superintendent, Terry Rayburn. Let's give him a great welcome this afternoon. so much. Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you so very much, and thank you, Jewel, and I know the story you were about to tell. Let's just say they were more than a few minutes early, and I had a couple of errands to do in the backyard, and I might or might not have been fully dressed. Hey, I was young and in decent shape, you know, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, I, I knew something special was in the air when I first met Jewel and Paulette. And I can say that for many of you. Dave and Pat, congratulations today. Amen. And congratulations. Appreciate you so much. And our ordination class, I am so impressed with you. And I believe that the Lord has been building this council to this moment. Now, you expect me to say, this has been a good council. We are so grateful. But folks, this has been a good council, <laughs> I'm telling you. Thank you to Sarah and Chandler, Sarah formerly Evans and Chandler Groover for helping lead worship today and last night the worship team from CLC in Fort Lauderdale, what a great job. Yesterday morning, uh, the folks from First Family at Spring Hill, we have just had an amazing worship experience. I don't know about you, but I needed it. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, Athena used to say that I could kill a plastic plant. And I can. But Terry Stanley has taught me the miracle of water. And I've learned that when certain things get a little dry, a little water can make a big difference. And that is sort of what several of us experienced these last three days. We came a little dry, but God poured his blessing upon us, and he has done a tremendous, tremendous thing 
in our lives. Now, I also want to thank our team. Uh, you heard our good secretary, Dr. Blackburn, our good treasurer, Dr. Blackburn, say that it takes a lot of money and a lot of work to run a district council. And Tammy Stanley and Johanna Irizarry, Lucy Clark, uh, Natalie, and all of our team go above and beyond what is necessary to make sure these councils work smoothly. And I want to thank you in public, all of you. Thank you for a great, great job. And Michael Patz and Greenhouse Church. Man. I have never heard a pastor work the finger into a sermon in a positive way. <laughs> Didn't he do a great job? <laughs> Amen. And you will not get any repeat performance on that this morning. As a matter of fact, my job is to keep from messing up this council. Amen. Uh, I remembered all night long why I like to preach first. But Melissa Alfaro, hallelujah, when I get worried about the future, I think about her, and I think about Aaron Burke, and Brent Simpson, Glenn Wolf. I think about some of the people in this ordination class. Two of our ordinees are not only getting ordained, they're bringing healthy churches into our fellowship. Is that awesome? You know what that tells me? That tells me that they've surveyed the Pentecostal, Charismatic, Evangelical uh, waterfront and decided that we're it. And I agree with that decision. Amen. I am so grateful for that. We have more than a couple parent-child ordinations in this council. Fathers will lay their hands on their sons or sons-in-law and ordain them to the full gospel ministry. If that doesn't touch your heart of charismania, my dad would have said, if that doesn't light your fire, your wood is wet. And our wood is dry, praise the Lord. I am so grateful that the idea of coming to a group of those of like precious faith is valuable to all of us at this time. In a couple of years, I will get one of those pens and one of those plaques if the Lord grants me life. Hallelujah. And I believe he will. And I'm going to look back many, many times over these 50 years. I'm a child of the 60s. The month I was ordained in Alabama by the Alabama District Council, there had been a banner headline in the New York Times and on Time magazine saying God was dead. That man had culturally progressed beyond the need for some kind of spiritual fantasy to sustain them. Let me tell you today, those editors are somewhere other than a happy life. Those writers are somewhere else doing something else. But we are here in the presence of the living God, and we have enjoyed him these days and these moments. Spirit life has been our theme, and I am grateful that spirit life has been our experience. In this ordination service, I have the great, great joy and honor of examining spirit life in ministry. Now, let me tell you without doing any damage or harm to our distinctive that there are many people around the world doing ministry 
and many of them are having great success. And I appreciate each and every one of them. But the New Testament is clear. You can do things, but there is a better power and a better anointing to do things for God if you allow the Holy Spirit to be not only with you, but in you. And not only in you, but flowing out of you among those that you preach to. Jewel said, I preach with energy. Listen, how can you not preach with energy if the spirit of the Lord our God is with you? Don't stand there like a statue and expect someone to be attracted. Except for last night. Amen. Show some of the energy that the Lord gives to you. So I started my study for this message. And I mean, I knew we would have already had great ministry. And I knew our ordination class was outstanding. And I really didn't know how to approach the sermon. The Lord gave me the idea to look at the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And as I began to look at them, I realized that they represented every experience that you are going to have in your ministries. Many of you have already had many of them. But those symbols that the Lord gives us represent challenges that we will face, but more importantly, gifts that he will give. And I've organized those symbols of the Holy Spirit into three categories. And it is, because I am a Pentecostal preacher, and I have to have three points. Amen. Those categories are, the Spirit upon us. The Spirit in us. And the Spirit flowing out of us. Father, help me communicate what you have given to me over these last few weeks. And give them to these your choice servants whom we ceremoniously ordain to the full gospel ministry today. But you have already ordained them by your Spirit's presence. You have already called them to a mighty, mighty, mighty ministry. And you have already started giving them the souls that will be their salaries in the heavenly sense from this day forward. Help me now. Communicate your heart. Help me communicate your truth. Help me Holy Spirit. Talk about you. This day. And I thank you for doing it. In Jesus name. Please give me slide one. When Jesus came back. Out of the wilderness. And his temptation. There were those who doubted that he had any experience with God. He just seemed like a ragtag, self-assigned prophet that had been out in the desert for 40 days or a long time, and they saw nothing exceptional about him. But as he came out of the wilderness, and I hope cleaned up a little bit, went to the synagogue immediately, when the pastor of the synagogue asked that would anyone read our scripture for today, all of the young men stood in that congregation. But the priest handed the book of Isaiah to Jesus and he unrolled it to the place where it said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. To preach the gospel, the good news to those who need to hear it most. 
my precious brothers and sisters, that spirit fell into my life 55 years ago and it's never been more powerful in me or real in my heart than it is this day. The spirit of the Lord must be upon you. It must be over you. It must be around you. It must be at immediate call in your heart and in your life and in your work. Otherwise, you're just a spiritual orator. You're just doing fine language for those who want to listen. But when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you will enter a new dimension of ministry. You will enter into a new power of ministry. And you will enter into a new result in ministry. The first symbol that we notice in the Christian era is the dove. Luke writes of that experience. I don't have to read it. You all know it. But Jesus was baptized by his cousin John. And as he was coming up out of the water, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended upon him. You know why? Because the spirit upon you and the spirit around you is not as powerful as the spirit in you. I've been preaching this gospel all my adult life. But just recently, I walked through desert experiences. And I needed more than contact with the spirit I needed infilling of the Spirit. That Spirit upon me was so precious, and I've been filled with the Spirit for decades. But in that particular wilderness, I needed more. Let me tell you, there will be moments when what you have had will not be sufficient. But what God has to add will bring that new dimension to your life. Never fear new experiences. God is already there because he goes before you and he will take care of you. Don't fear it when the devil says, I'm going to rip you to pieces. Remind the devil of Daniel. Don't fear when the devil says, I'm going to burn you alive. Remind the devil of the three Hebrew children. Don't fear when fire is coming. Remind the devil of the day of Pentecost when fire set upon each and every one of those that receive the Spirit. The perfect illustration of God's presence is that the Spirit upon us should always lead to the Spirit within us. I've been asked many, many times, do you just... Get filled with the Holy Spirit. One time, you just get saved, hopefully. One time. But when you get saved, all of your sins are forgiven. You are totally clean by God's cleansing power. You don't need that experience again. As a matter of fact, that experience depended on Jesus and your request of him, but you will need increased power over and over and over through your life. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit moves to take residence inside us. The Holy Spirit is not a denomination. The Holy Spirit is not an organization. The Holy Spirit is the living Trinity's third member, and he is with us this day. Are you Pentecostal? Oh, yes. I have a Pentecostal credential. The next time you get into a real spiritual battle, show the devil your certificate. (laughs) Just wave your ordination in front of the devil and see what happens. 
let me prophesy. Nothing. (laughs) But when you turn in the middle of those battles, set your feet upon the rock of your salvation, lift your hands toward glory, and say, I am full of the Spirit of God. That's why I'm Pentecostal, not because I belong to this organization and thank God for this organization, but because the Spirit is within me. The devil hates that. That's why you should do it often. Just aggravate him with your infilling. And some of those darkest moments, and I'm not going to preach about this all day, but many scriptures that I've lived by all my life gained new life for me. One of the most important was when you don't know how to pray. Just surrender and let the Holy Spirit pray through you. And there were times, especially near the end, when neither of us knew how to pray. And we would take each other's hand and start speaking in tongues. And let me tell you, God had a different ending to Athena's illness that I wished for and prayed for. But he was faithful through that experience. And the Holy Spirit, not upon us, but within us, made the difference in those moments. There is nothing that can defeat you when you are full of the Spirit. I said that in a service not long ago and someone came to me after the service and said in a mocking way, she died. No, her flesh ceased to live. Her spirit. Her spirit is still alive. It's alive right now in eternity. It won't be reconstituted. Her body will be, but her spirit will never be recreated. It is alive and well and powerful in eternity right now. And when the enemy comes against you with any life-defeating problem, let me tell you, the spirit within you will make the difference and bring you victory every time. Oh, Terry, you're just preaching what everybody's preached. Yep. Yep. My daddy preached it. My granddaddy preached it. My great-granddaddy preached it. You know why? Because the enemies and warfare of ministry is the same for every generation. If you think that your spirit came from the latest book, or the most recent podcast, or those things that were on Christian television last week, is the source of your spirit. You are going to be one defeated television fan because this spirit does not come from other people's readings or writings. This spirit does not come even from our culture. This spirit comes from the throne room of glory. And though it is with us all the time, there are moments when we need it most. And as Jesus came out of the water, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended Upon him, and something like a voice of thunder said, This is my son. I love it when God speaks to the devil for me. Have you thought about that? This is my son. Back off. 
Now, and as this same scripture says, the devil left him for a season and waited for a time to return. That slew-footed sucker will be back. But I want you to know when he comes back, the spirit will not have left us. The spirit will still be before us, around us, behind us, and most importantly, in us. If you ever allow the Holy Spirit to drift out of the primary position of your heart and soul, you are in trouble. But when you keep it vibrant, powerful, authoritative, and fresh, there's not a devil in hell that can do anything against you and be successful. God will make the difference in each and every day. Wow! That's good. That's really good. And a lot of Pentecostals, especially Charismatics, think that that is the end all experience upon us in us what more could there be well as we find in the last symbol of the Holy Spirit which is flowing water in John chapter 7 the writer tells us that it shall be in us like a well springing up and it will flow out of us. You know why many people come to Pentecostal churches to be prayed for for healing? Because they've been possibly to other places and there was no flow out of the ministry. There was no flow out of us into their problem that makes the difference. Why do they come when they need this infilling? Because they know that when we get around the altar like we did Monday night and like we did last night, it's not just a bunch of people praying. It's the Holy Spirit flowing back and forth in and out of faithful believers and faithful ministers. And that causes pools in the desert. It causes absolute victory in the face of every defeat. And it causes the advancement of the kingdom. Winning souls enlarges the kingdom. But spirit-empowered ministry advances the kingdom. Jewel mentioned that Athena and I were in Beirut. There were so many things that happened, I couldn't catalog them all. But I always think of one young lady student at the Beirut College for women. We sang there once a month, and our singing was horrible. Bad would have been an improvement for us. So why did we sing? Because in Lebanon at that time, it was illegal to proselytize for Christianity. You could not preach publicly in Beirut. And we had an attorney who had met Jesus in a wonderful way and was helping us in many different ways in our mission. And the leader of our mission, Brother Hoskins, took him aside one day and he said, I want you to scour the constitution of this nation and I want you to find something we can do to proclaim the gospel. And the man came back in about a week and it says, the constitution says, you cannot preach the gospel publicly in this city, but it doesn't say you can't sing it. So I'm telling you, suddenly all of us in that band became sanctified Elvis. I mean, we wrote some of the dumbest songs that have ever been written about Jesus. 
You do not know him, but he is alive. <laughs> He's here today, and all of us thrive. <laughs> if you want to know him, come down front and talk to us. <laughs> because Jesus is with us, and he is alive. And all the music students were going, Ugh. But hungry souls were going, give me more. Give me more. It wasn't about the singing. It was about the water flowing. The Spirit is upon us. The Spirit is in us. But the Spirit must escape us. Never allow the kingdom of God to be limited by your body's epidermis. Always let the Spirit flow from within without and allow it to touch the weary, weary, weary souls of our world today. And I just saw these statistics again. All of you study them for the first time in American history. America is no longer a religious nation. Our secularism has now overtaken the percentages of church attendance, recorded salvations, and church activities. We live in a desperate time. Our world needs what we have. And I appreciated Brother Brogdon so much last night. It's not about offending people. It's not about working in some other area. It is about investing what we enjoy in the world that has no idea how good it is. But when they begin to receive, bathe and splash in the water that flows out of us, hallelujah, they are made new creations in Christ. Yes, the old men and women are put away and a new man is formed. And that new man is a new creation in Christ. We are not here just about church attendance, even though we want that to increase. We are not just about promotion, but we must promote. We are not just about offerings. Wayne is out. Counting the offering right now, I'm sure. Praise the Lord. I hope it takes him a long time. <laughs> it's about the fresh water that we have flowing out of us. A common expression in our culture about doing a favor for someone else is, I will carry the water for you. I will carry the water for Jesus. You must carry the water for the Lord the rest of your life. If you get a 50-year pen and plaque, it will be 2072. And you won't look like you look. You will look like I look. You may not be as thrilled with that appearance as you once were, but it's not about your wrinkles. It's about the waves of water flowing out of you. So as we close the ministry segment of this council, I want to tell you that spirit life in ministry is critical to spiritual survival in ministry. It's the spirit that comes upon us. It's the spirit that gives us unction. It's the spirit that reveals truth to us from the pages of the Bible. It's the spirit that makes us alive when we don't think we can go another step. It's the spirit that makes the difference as we go forward. Always have the spirit upon you. Always have the Spirit within you. Always have the Spirit flowing out of you. And just before Secretary Powell presents you to this council for your formal ordination, I want to pray a pastor's prayer. 
over you. And I also want to include all of our pastors that are here this morning. This was one of the things Athena learned during our time together. Not so much for our senior leadership pastors, but for their families. She prayed for your children. You will never know how intense and burdened those prayers were. She prayed for family members who had lost the life of their Christianity and wandered from the safety of the church. She prayed for aunts and uncles that had forsaken the Lord and for prodigals that were gone and had not come back yet. And over the years, we saw answers to many, many of those prayers. And the priestly prayer gained a new life in me. Father, I thank you for these you have called. We did not draft them. We did not choose them. We did not headhunt them. You gave them to us. And where you have called to ministry, you will provide for ministry. So I pray now, in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost, that firstly, you build a wall of protection around these ministers, their families, their homes, their children, their experiences. No attack of the enemy shall be successful. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. You will keep them safe by your mighty power. Yet we know there will be battles. And I pray that you go before them. And I pray that you help us remember that the battle belongs to you. And I pray that you help us know you never lose. And in your name, we fight alongside and behind you. I pray that you supply their needs. The professional world makes fun of ministry salaries. But Lord, they only know the money part. They don't know the spirit part. I pray that you prosper each and every person that follows you in these ministries. I pray that you open doors that only you can open. I pray that you make contacts that only you can make. I pray that you attract souls that no promotion, no slick production can attract, but the fresh flow of the Spirit can bring towards salvation. Draw them through the lives and work of these your servants. I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we commend them to you and place them in your hand. That's the best and most wonderful thing we can do for them. So we rejoice in this moment and look forward to the future. Amen and amen. Praise God. Would you stand with me? In just a few minutes, we will be doing the roll call to the ordination. But I think even though our superintendent has prayed, no, I am not going to enter into another prayer. I do think that we need to take a moment to absorb, to reflect, to accept the message that God has brought through our district pastor. I think it is one of those exhortations that we sometimes take for granted. I too have been in this for a while. And sometimes the things that are the dearest and the most precious to us can sometimes be taken for granted. 
So would you take a moment and just reflect upon the Lord, lift your hands in submission to him. Say, Lord, all through this place, whether you're a pastor or a clergy or you're lay, you receive this word that we will be the spirit life people. Father, do it. Do it, we pray. I know that our superintendent was somewhat tongue-in-cheek when he said he'd just coming in and the heels of this district council just so he wouldn't blow it. But I want you to know he far, for, he, that was not even close. He, he, is, he has continued to carry the excellence of this council because you heard from the heart of our pastor Let's express our appreciation to him. All right. I would like for the presbytery and the class that is being ordained to remain standing. Everyone else, you may be seated. We will begin our roll call. But before we do, if you will allow me one little personal side note. Yesterday when you afforded Kathy and I an opportunity to serve you again for another term, our hearts were humbled. And I am not trying to repeat or reflect upon that again, but there were some people in our secretariat that needed public acknowledgement. Sister Johanna, this lady has served in our division and with me for 22 of our 23 years. We love you, Johanna. Thank you. She needs a medal. We thank you. Sister Natalie serves in the credentialing admin, and she has just stepped in and excelled. And we thank you, Natalie, for your excellence as well. You make our lives, Kathy, and my life so much easier and we cannot say thank you enough for your service your love, your loyalty far more than we deserve thank you alright Deborah. if you Deborah J. Cheatwood would come and take your initial position right here in front of me there you go. That a lady. It's all on you. That's. <laughs> Lanaire Clairvoy. I hope I did your name justice. God bless you, my friend. Richard J. Cody.
As you come up, if you just hand your Bibles to the presbytery, those that are praying for you, if you just hand your Bibles to them, that would be so appreciated. Thank you. Elias Gutierrez. Joseph. All of these are very, very special. But Brother Guterres and Brother Joseph are both bringing established congregations into our fellowship as well as being ordained in our fellowship. Haley J. Judah. Judah D. Lupasala. You paid your cheering section, huh? Jonathan T. Manning. William Manzano. Brandon Mitchell. Emmanuel Nina and Regina Nina. Jody E. Rendondo. Zachary J. Ricks. Douglas J. Roth. Thomas M. Russo. Caitlin N. Semon. John A. Shrek. Tammy E. Spedden. Teresa. A. Swan. Felicia D. Widden. K. 
Casey J. Wender. Brother Superintendent, it is our distinct honor and delight, not only on behalf of our district, but already on behalf of the General Council of the Assemblies of God to acknowledge and recognize our 2022 ordination class. And we welcome you to bring the charge. May we stand. And if you are a family member of one of the ordinees, and it's kind of close down here, but if you want to come and stand behind your family member, please do that now. Ordinees, upon your profession of faith and answering the call of the Lord God himself to preach the gospel, you today join a long line of faithful servants of God that stretches all the way back to the upper room in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Those People in that line have never allowed a break from that day to this. There has always been courageous, faith-filled, faithful people proclaiming the good news. Today, you join that wonderful line. Therefore, I admonish you to love the Word Make sure that your sermons, that your lifestyle, that your devotion, and that your prayers are based on the Word. Love it above anything else and use it as your foundation. Secondly, learn the Word. There are tens of thousands of people in America who love the Word symbolically but don't know anything about what it says study the word learn the word and use the word to formulate your messages and sermons live the word the worst damage done to the kingdom is by those who say they love it and attempt to preach it but they don't live it and those mistakes cause huge harm to the kingdom. Never let that be said about you. Love the Word, learn the Word, and live the Word. And importantly, preach the Word. Your Bibles are being handed to you now. And our presbyters offer their most sincere prayers for anointing and power because the mantle of that line that reaches back to the upper room now falls upon you. And our presbyters are placing these mantles on your shoulders to symbolically say the mantle now is upon your shoulders. And now join us. Stretch out your hands toward these ordinees as our presbyters pray the prayer of ordination at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> 